all aboard for the ride. How many contestants are there? Three of you. How fun. That's great. Thank you. Are any of you first-time riders? Okay, don't worry about a thing. We'll be sure to give you all the instructions you need. Our host will show you the ropes and the cables. That's just a little joke. Go ahead, player one, and type... Very good. What about your name, player? Perfect, thank you. And now it's... Thanks a lot. You'll be buzzing in with the letter Q, player one. Q, as in Quonset Hut. Player two, please use the letter B as your buzzer. That's B as in Beckenbauer, Frong Beckenbauer. Player three, your buzzer is the letter P as in Parachute Pants. Please turn off all pagers and cell phones during the performance. Break a leg. Culture and pop culture collide. This episode of You Don't Know Jack, The Ride, is brought to you by the Bard's Writing Centers. Learn to write plays like Shakespeare so he doesn't have to. And now, here he is, the hardest working guy in trivia, your host, Guy Towers. All right, welcome to the show. So, you think your life's a comedy, huh? That's not comedy. I'll show you comedy. All righty, first off, we got to give you your screws. All right, you can choose, gonna get some screws, and here you go. All right, now pay attention, and I'll tell you about a new and improved way to screw your neighbor. When you see a question you don't want to answer, buzz in immediately and start hitting the S key. That's S for screws. Now, every time you do, you're gonna be firing screws into the screen, totally annihilating the question. When you're done blasting, then you force your friend to answer it. That's called screwing flakjack style. So, uh, if you're not the one dishing out the screws, you better be reading as fast as you can. All right, I hope you got all that. All right, shake a spear there, because it's showtime. All right, player three, buzz in, and let's see the cash value for this one. Get ready for hot new trend, Shakespearean English. Question, please. If Shakespeare's play The Taming of the Shrew were rewritten as an article for Cosmopolitan, how would its headline most likely read? Teenage Hit it, player one! In The Taming of the Shrew, the out-of-control Kate is finally won over by her dominating suitor and turned into a nice girl. Now, The Taming of the Shrew's hair... Ugh, can you say hot oil treatment? Player one, hit that buzzer and let's check out the cash for this one. And your category is... Shakespeare's Rosio and Juliet. Here comes the questione. Imagine Rosie O'Donnell legally changes her name to Rosie Posey Fling Flang O'Donnelly Do. According to Juliet's famous line in Romeo and Juliet, what will be true? She'll live in the state of Denmark, she'll be even rosier, she'll be a princess, or she'll still smell nice. Player one. Even rosier? Nah, she's looking quite trim these days. You know, thanks to that Cosmo article, How to Lose Weight by Faking Your Death. <laughs> Hey, plan three, go! Ah. A rose or a rosy by any other name would smell as sweet. Okay, player three, buzz in and set the cash value. This baby's gonna be... Harold, Harold, wherefore art thou, Harold? Hey, ever seen that Brady Bunch episode where Marsha gets cast as Juliet in the school play? Well... If Juliet were to suffer from the same condition Marsha does while rehearsing the play, how might she die in the final scene? Her broken nose punctures her brain, her black wig chokes her, her swollen ego makes her head burst, or her huge pimples devour her. All yours, player one! Harold, you're standing in my light! And take off those glasses. Romeo didn't wear glasses. Now do your line over and do it better this time. Thank God! After being cast in the school play as Juliet, Marcia suffers from a swollen ego and makes everyone around her miserable. You know, like she does in all the other episodes. Player one, give me some buzzer. Let's check out that cash. 
Bingo. There was a bard who had a stage, the globe was its name, oh, G-L-O-B-E, 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 and it burned to the ground, oh. Welcome to Globe! Alright, here's a quick explanation of how this thing works. You're gonna get a series of puzzles. When you figure out each answer, wait for the first letter of that answer to get highlighted. Then, plug it in. If you're right, I'll give you 500 bucks, and you collect that letter. But I'm taking away 500 every time you're wrong. Be the first one to collect all the letters, and you get the bonus. You got it? Well, I hope so, because here we go. Germanic Donut Cream. The Fabia. Home of the Sphinx. Egypt. Citrus that shows its navel. Orange. English timekeeping city. Blank Brown. Georgia. Beetle Home. Liverpool. City of Beans and Tea. Boston. With the last letter in the bonus is yours, player two. Live A beneficiary. Ethiopia. Madonna's baby! Like a virgin! The cross used by Red Cross! Geneva! Nice! Globe! Nice bonus, player two! Player one, head of the pack! Alright, uh, let's keep going! Okay, player two, hit your buzzer and show us how much cash we're playing. The category is... The Lear World. Well, I know how you love Brady questions, so here's another one. See if you can complete this analogy. King Lear is to Cordelia as Mike Brady is to whom? Is it Marsha, Jan, Cindy, or Alice? Hit it, player one! Mr. Brady is not to Alice, Sam is to Alice. <laughs> Who's going? Player three, do it! King Lear's youngest daughter is Cordelia, just like Cindy is Mike Brady's youngest one in curls. <laughs> and strangely enough, Cordelia is constantly teased about her lisp by Buddy, the Duke of Hinton. Okay, player three, hit your buzzer and show us how much cash is up for green. Get ready for... Out, damn salt! Okay, player one, here's your chance to get above water. You know, show some dignity, okay? If Will Shakespeare had been an existentialist, which of these would have been the best? Player two, who's good? You're screwed, player one. Give me an answer. Well, you picked the first one. Let's see how you did. Good Will Shakespeare. Wait, doesn't that star Matt Damon? You go, player three. Existentialist philosophers believe that the individual has complete free will. But I'm still confused about that Shakespeare movie I saw called Free Willy. I mean, I didn't know the bard had a blowhole. Buzz in, player three, and let's see how much cash is riding on this one. It's roadkill time. Let me tell you how this game works here. You're gonna get different pairs of things that are somehow related, and you're gonna see a series of items that may or may not connect the pair. It's your buzzer when you see the item that correctly links the two. I'm giving out a thousand bucks if you get it right, but choose wisely. You lose a thousand dollars every time you're wrong. At the end, there's gonna be a bonus question worth bonus cash. Let's just say you should pay close attention to all the correct answers. Got it? Good. We're off. Putting on clothes, and bandage on a wound. What do these two have in common? You choose blanket, Tom. 
some bonus action. What do all the correct answers have in common? Are they all tragic foibles? Answers to play Hamlet. Shakespeare's antagonist. Stop you ship. Got it. Rank it up, player three. for it there, but uh, hey, things can change. Player three, hit your buzzer and lock in the cash for this one. And the category is... Will's Will. Hey, you ever hear about Shakespeare's Will? Well... Which of these things did Will will to his wife? His most romantic... Player three, do it! Uh, hello? Player one? Right, a sonnet. Well, that and a t-shirt that said my husband was a successful playwright and all I got was a lousy sonnet. And this t-shirt. <laughs> Ball's in your court, take it, player two. Whoops, gotta run. <laughs> okay, that's it, that's it. Shakespeare willed his second best bed to his wife. He gave his best bed to one of his daughters. Hmm, methinks old Will might have fit right in on ye old Jerry Springer show. Okay, player one, hit your buzzer and let's see what's in the kitty. Whip and poop snurk and flavin. Oh, no. Not another one of these. It can't be. No! Oh, damn. All right, here's your gibberish category. Throw Ophelia the spliff. Well, here's how this thing works. You're gonna get a phrase that sounds like gibberish. You gotta buzz in and tell me what it rhymes with. Now, every second and a half, some of the cash is gonna disappear. So if you wanna win big, you gotta be quick. Okay, you ready for some rhyming? Let's do it. Spliffs, floats. Show us how it's done, player three. Ah, hell, I confess. Yeah, I've used cliff notes. In fact, I've never read an actual book in my entire life. That's right, Mrs. Siegel. I aced your damn Pride and Prejudice exam with cliff notes. Do you hear me? Cliff notes! All right, player three, buzz in and let's see the cash value for this one. This one's called... The Scottish Teleplay. And away we go. Suppose Shakespeare's tragic figure Macbeth wants to reinvent himself as a TV actor. In which of the following TV shows would there be a plum role for the Scottish King? St. Elsinore, A Midsummer Night's Dream On, Welcome Player One! Player One, stuff it back in the- Big Dancer Three, how'd you do? As he moves his way up the Royal Scottish Ladder, Macbeth is appointed the Thane of Cawder. Mr. Cotter? Yes, Mick Horshack. Up your nose with a bloody dagger. <laughs> well, player one, one good screw deserves another. <laughs> it's your buzzer, player three, and let's see how much moolah this one will be. Mercator Projection Theater. Okay, you know how Shakespeare said all the world's a stage? Well... 
If the Western Hemisphere is stage right, the Eastern Hemisphere is stage left, the Northern Hemisphere is upstage, and the Southern Hemisphere... Oh, yours, player one. Da, I got confused. Da. <laughs> Player two, what's the right answer? Number three, huh? Okay. Up left. Looks like your good sense just up and left. <laughs> hey, take a shot. No, no, hit your buzzer. Yeah, will you buzz in? I'm gonna kill you. Player three, do it. The USA is up. Right. Of course, European stage actors would say they're upright. Yeah, up height, maybe. Okay, player three, buzz in and set the cash value. This baby's gonna be... The Stratford-upon-Avon lady. All right, give me a correct answer. You got 44.88. Let's do it. You know, the original Avon lady did not sell cosmetic products. The first Avon... You go, player three. The first Avon lady was a man hawking volumes of Shakespeare. He gave away perfume along with the books, and the customers liked the perfume better. But hey, can you blame them? I mean, you ever try dabbing some Macbeth on your McDuff? Player three, hit your buzzer and lock in the cash for this. Welcome to the Jack Attack. I'm gonna be throwing a bunch of words up on the screen. Buzz in when you see two items on the screen that match. Each time you're right, you make money. And each time you're wrong, you lose it. Now here's the thing. Not any two items that go together are necessarily a match. Remember the clue. It's gotta be a match that fits this clue. A what? Don't forget, the match has to follow that clue. Good luck. player one at least you pulled out that last one but it didn't really help you that much huh hey what's the matter Jimbo uh, I couldn't afford to keep my cell phone now driving without being on the phone feels Weird. <laughs> have to pay attention to the road, huh? Yeah. Try this. What's in the bag? It's a cell phone substitute. Put it on. <laughs> I can't see anything with these blinders on. No? I see. It also comes with a five-year-old child. How come horses don't have toes? Why do we pee? Who's that? Where are we going? Me, me, Wow, me. it feels just like there? using my yeah. cell phone. <laughs> Not yet. Did you have a hands-free phone? Yeah. No. Oh, then we have the head-to-shoulder strap. <laughs> Wow! How can your head is sideways? With my head fixed to my shoulder, an incessant noise in my ear, and my eyes distracted from the reality around me, I feel just like I'm using my car phone, but I'm not racking up any air time. Hey, we better get to work, buddy. You're right. Speed up. You can't see them, but there's some people riding on bikes just up ahead. <laughs> then let's go. The cell phone substitute, because you don't need technology to be a menace to society. What's menace to sobriety mean? Playing solitaire on the computer is fun, right? But it's hard to remember all those rules. Now there's a computer card game that gets back to the basics. 